In today's video, we're going to learn how to properly play the high G doubling. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing with any other pipers you think might could uh, get something from this. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. In the description below, there's a link to the PDF document you see right here. So go ahead, download that, put it on a tablet, print it out, have it in front of you so you can follow along. So today is all about the high G doubling, and it's kind of an interestingly named embellishment because, to be honest, I think it has more in common with the light D throw, and I have a video on the light D throw up there for you to check out. But in any case, it's a light doubling. It's a very kind of musical embellishment, and interestingly enough, it doesn't have any grace notes in it. So we can see the doubling right here, and there'll be a graphic on screen, and you can see there are two grace notes in it, but neither one of them are really a grace note. They're both what I call sounding tones. They're both notes that are played with real fingerings and audible. They're quite quick, but they're not grace notes. For example, if we were to do this first one right here, this A to the high G doubling, and we were gonna make that first G a G grace note, it would sound like this. And that's, that's not it at all. Now, let's say we were gonna make the F a nice striking motion. That would sound like And it's not that either, it's So we're gonna practice it nice and open and get it under control. You can even see it's very similar to the D throw in what we're doing with the pointer finger. Now with the light D throw briefly, we started from a low G, raised to a D, down to a C, and back up to a D. But you see the pointer finger was open, closed, open. Now we're just open, closed, open, just without any sort of introductory low note. Though if you were to stick one in it, like here's a light D throw. And here is a high G doubling if you happen to go to low G first. You can see they're very similar. So in my perfect world, I probably would have called it the high G throw. I believe the John Cairns tutors actually call it the G throw. Everyone I know calls it a doubling. So we're going to go ahead and keep using that language. But I did want to talk about that just a little bit. I think one of the reasons it doesn't need anything like the low G is because it's off the top of the scale. There's only one note you can't readily play this embellishment from. Well, I guess two. You can't really do it from a high G either. But everything from low G to F, which are all on this exercise here, you can readily get to this high G doubling and play it good, clean, accurately. Whereas the D throw, you kind of need to, it's in the middle of the scale. So you kind of need that low G, I feel, especially if you're coming from above. Kind of hitting that low note really helps you establish something. I just don't think that's nearly as important with the high G doubling. You could make the extended high G doubling. But anyways, don't worry about that. That'll never be a thing. All right, so we've got the metronome here set at 75. Let's go ahead and give this a go. So to start with, we're going to play the low A, head up to a high G, down to an F, back up to a high G, first with them being even eighth notes. Then in the next bar, you can see it written as the embellishment, two sounding tones, relatively quick, starting on the beat. You'll hear the cadence as it's supposed to go. I have this at 75, but you put it the speed you need to. That works for you in your world. It's not an overly difficult embellishment. Don't make more of it than there is. But remember, it's not a G grace note, nor is it an F tapping grace note. It's two relatively quick, but actual notes. Aroda, starting on the beat. And it's a great way to give your high G just a little bit of lilt and lift. And just, it's one of the more common embellishments for the top hand. So get used to playing it. Yeah. 
So yeah, it's a shorter video, but they don't all have to be long. This is a relatively simple and easy embellishment, so practice it, get it under control. It's a lovely embellishment and quite common. There's not a lot we can do in and around high G, so you'll play a bunch of these. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of the video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified of when I post new videos. I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way to helping support the channel. So go, there's a link in the description below. I'd love to have you check out the Patreon there. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the address you see here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise with hats and mugs and t-shirts and all sorts of stuff. So check that out. Get yourself some bagpipe merchandise and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. All right, everybody. I'm Matt Willis, Bagpiper. Until next time, cheers. Cheers.